This particular experiment turned out to be um, a failure, so I'm going to edit the movie down to where it's very short. I'll show only the parts that are really uh, pertinent to making the Nixie tube, and um, then show why the thing failed. Uh, the, the main test here was to test the, the epoxy seal in making the tube, and that was the part that failed, so um, we'll have to try something else to make this Nixie tube. But you can watch this movie and see what it took to make the Nixie tube, which was really quite surprisingly difficult. Okay, this session we're going to go ahead and we're going to attempt to make a Nixie tube. Um, I'm not going to explain what a Nixie tube is. I assume that you already know if you're watching this. And if you don't know, well, keep watching and you'll find out. Now, in making a Nixie tube, there are, are two problems. The, the main problem is how do you get enough wires through the glass to, to supply the connections. Um, one method is to go ahead and take a glass disc, and then you make the seals separately. You take and make a tungsten seal into Pyrex, and have a nickel wire on each side, and then you take those seals and you place them into the glass and you fuse them onto it. And this way you would end up with a frit. It, it's called a frit in the industry. It's just a glass disc with sealed wires going through it. You would then build your Nixie tube onto that and the envelope would seal to the outside of that frit. Now this is a very difficult glass job to do. I mean, when, when you're going to do this, it, it is extremely difficult. You're subject to leaks anywhere around any of these um, uh, seals. So even if you have perfect seals through the, through the uh, center for the wire, you could also have a leak around the outside. Now in a factory when they make them, they put it in an oven, they heat the whole thing up to red hot, they let it just fuse by its own weight. Um, we don't have that capability when we're doing it in a home shop. Now, this may not be the best way to do it. Now, another way of doing it is to go ahead and use a pinch. Now, a pinch is very easy to make for up to possibly five to seven wires. Now, we need 12 wires for a direct connection to a Nixie tube. The minimum that we can make a Nixie with a Nixie tube is seven wires. If we're going to have ten digits, you know, zero through nine, we have to have at least seven wires for to control those digits. We would have five wires for two sets of digits and two ano two separate anodes, and you would you would bank the two sets of uh, digits, and that way you can get by with seven wires. That still is a seven wire seal to uh, get through the glass. Now, also, the positions of these wires are not going to be exactly where you want them as far as the, uh, the Nixie elements are. So, using a seal like this is possible and we may end up doing it if we cannot do something different. What happens if we're to take a vacuum tube? This is a television tube. There are tens of thousands of these, if not millions of them, laying around in various warehouses and uh, things like that. You can get them on the internet for a dollar a piece. Um, they're, they're of no use for anything. No use whatsoever for anything. There are no TVs left that use them, and there's no other use for them. So, unless hobbyists have some use for them, uh, maybe audio people sometimes have certain ones that they will use. It has a frit with 12 leads on it. Now the problem with this is that this is soft glass. Now when they make this, it is made in a machine where the entire process is done at thousands of degrees. During the entire processing and manufacturing of the tube, none of the tube comes down below thousands of degrees. So you don't have trouble with annealing. The tube is, when it's finished, it's evacuated, and after that it's annealed and the whole process is over. We can't do that in the home shop. We have no way to keep this thing always at a thousand degrees. So we're going to sit here and we're going to have that frit and we have to somehow seal the envelope onto that frit at room temperature. That's almost impossible to do. I mean, there are experienced glass blowers who know how to do this, but it is a very tricky thing and it takes a lot of skill to do it. What happens 
if we do it differently? What if we make a Pyrex envelope and we will take and cut the frit off of the tube and we will epoxy the joint. We'll use a, a, an industrial epoxy that will make the vacuum seal onto that frit. Can we get away with this? And this is what we're going to determine in today's experiment. We're going to build a Nixie tube and we're going to seal the tube using epoxy and then we'll pull a vacuum on it and flat, we'll put a getter in it to go ahead and clean up the, the residual air in it and then we'll charge it with, um, with some neon and, and helium and argon and other gases to go ahead and get it to glow and then we'll seal it off and we're going to see how long that epoxy seal will go ahead and hold vacuum. Now the epoxy that is available is Armstrong A12 which is an industrial epoxy. This is not your um, five minute epoxy that you get at the hardware store. Um, Armstrong A12 is an industrial epoxy. Um, it uh, is good up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit so we'll be able to bake the tube out at high temperature. Now the problem that we could have is that the Pyrex has an expansion coefficient of uh, very small and the frit has a larger coefficient of expansion. So we're going to be having a junction between Pyrex and the frit where we're going to have a slight difference in the expansion ratio. Now the question is will the epoxy make up for that expansion and make it to where it will not crack? I know for sure if we were to, to seal it, just use heat and seal the glass together, it would crack for sure. But maybe the epoxy will go ahead and give enough of a difference in thermal expansion to where we can get away with using the two different glasses together. So we have here a piece of Pyrex tubing and it fits just right over the frit. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut the frit off of this tube and we'll make the envelope out of the uh, Pyrex and then we'll put our, our uh, Nixie tube elements in there and then we'll seal it together. All right, let's get started. First, we'll go ahead and cut the tube open and get us a frit. Now, to hold the tube, we have a tube holder made here. It's cut to the same diameter as the tube, and we've got slits in it. And by having a spring, that spring clamps down on it, and that holds the tube. And we clamp that in the vise, in the, I mean, in the chuck. Okay, to cut the tube, we're going to go ahead and use the diamond saw. I'm going to make it about three-eighths of an inch. Use a small amount of WD-40 on the tube for lubrication. Okay. All right, now, got an unexpected problem here. We got to remove this stuff here to get down to our electrodes, and we got this little bit of a of a ledge here. We'll have to see if we can do that. I've taken the uh, frit and I've straightened out the leads. I've cut the uh, cut the plate off of it and all the other elements off of it, and we now have the leads just sticking up here. Okay, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and close off the top and put us an evacuation stem on it. Close off the end of a big piece of tubing. First thing we do is we do what's known as pull a point. We just heat the end, pinch it shut, and then pull it and make a point on it. This is inch and a quarter standard wall Pyrex. Shit. I goofed that up good.
Okay, next we're going to blow a hole in the end of it and put our evacuation stem on it. Okay, there's our hole. First I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a flare on the stem. That way it won't tend to close up on us when we uh, seal it on. A little bit off center, I don't like that. There we go. <clears throat> now we'll go ahead and cut it off. I think probably about Maybe two inches or so will be tall enough. Two and a half inches for the mixing. I use the diamond saw. I just use a paintbrush with WD-40 as a lubricant. cuts right through. And there's our envelope. Alright, to make our elements, our, our digits, we're going to use, uh, this is I think 12 mil stainless steel wire. Everybody seems to like stainless steel for making Nixie tube digits, so that's what we'll use. I don't know anything about Nixie tubes, so I have to just go on rumor. All right, we'll just... <clears throat> okay, I'm going to just draw... I'm just going to draw a... Uh... Okay, that's going to be the size of our tube, so our digits... I'm going to make the digits that tall. Okay. We'll just make them all fit in there. Okay, so for a number one, all right, we'll put a little, a little crook on the top. And it's just a piece of wire. All right, so I'm going to leave about a half inch on the bottom, and we'll trim that when we, when we put it into the uh, base, into the frit. Okay, the two, all right, we got to kind of form. I'm not going to make these pretty. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make them. You know, you can sit there and use pieces of tubing and stuff to bend it and make it real pretty. But this is just to make a test one right now. This is a, a feasibility tube. We don't really need to have absolutely perfect numerals and things like that. Just get something working here. Okay, and we'll move a little more. Okay, even more. Alright, that's going to do it. Okay, and then we're going to come way back. I'm just bending this wire. Okay, we can come back even more. Okay, and there's our two. Okay, and we'll leave a little extra for mounting it. I don't know how these are going to mount. Okay, that's two. All right, a three.
Wow. Some people propose to do this by etching on flat plate. I think that probably would um, be a pretty nice way to make some pretty numbers, but I don't know how how much uh, time it would take to do it. It might turn out to be quite time consuming. But if you're going to make a lot of digits, that would certainly save time in the end. This is definitely time consuming here. Alright, we got part of the three made. Now we've got to make another loop around this way. Okay, we're getting close. Okay. This is stiff wire. This is not um, annealed stainless. This is this is um, what they call is hard drawn stainless. It's very cheap. This this wire, the whole roll, this entire um, this is um, 100 feet of it, and it was about 27 dollars. So it's about 30 cents a foot, which is not really bad. Okay, there's our three. All right, a four. Let's see. We come four. We're going to just make kind of like that. All right. So we'll come over here. We'll bend. And bend. <laughs> now that was easy as pie. <laughs> a four is an easy one to make. Look at that. I mean, just dip, 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 and it was done. All right, there's a four. Now five, we got another curve to make. Oh boy. I'm going to try just making a. Okay, we're going to come across, down. All right, let's see. We'll go here first. I think we'll do the curve first. Okay. Okay. Down a little more on it. We'll go ahead and flatten these out. After we're done, we'll take them and flatten them out good so they don't tend to short together. Th this is just a throw-together tube. This isn't... Um, this is made just for a feasibility study. We're not going to sit here and make a super duper tube that might fail. Hey, it might fail. Alright, and what we'll have to do on this one, we'll have to weld a wire for supporting it. We'll just weld it on there because I got not sure exactly how. See, we don't want to go from there because it'll glow down to there. So we have to catch it somewhere that it's not going to glow. I don't know exactly how to do that. I'm, I don't know how in a Nixie tube they stop the connection wire from glowing. Maybe they coat it with something or... I don't know. Okay, a six will be like that. We got the same problem with it. So we See, with a four, we're right at the connection. But with a five, we can probably connect right at the bottom and go to the connection. And six, we'll have to do the same thing. We'll just weld a little wire onto it. I don't know really why I'm making all these digits. I think I'm just going to make... Well, the main uh, something I want to test is to see how much the, the stacking distance matters. See, we're going to have a stack that's going to be on the order of a half inch thick when we put all these wires in there. All these digits. So... What I want to do is make them up so that we can see how they're going to light from different thicknesses in the stack. You know, are some of them in the middle going to have trouble lighting up and the ones on the end are going to light good? Or, you know, what? Okay, there's a six. Okay, next, let's see, a seven. That's, a, that's gravy there. Okay. Seven. I guess we ought to put a little deal on the top. A little crick on the top to make it look pretty. Okay, we'll go around a little bit more. That looks good. 
Okay. Now the eight, that's a, that's a booger. Eight is a booger. We got two complete loops to make. I'm going to try wrapping it. Let me, I don't know what will happen if I wrap it around a pen. That's too big. Let's try quarter inch drill. Okay. I'm just wrapping it around this drill bit to get the shape. Okay, we're getting there. Getting there. Okay, that's that's getting there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take that and bend it around a little bit more. Oops. Okay. There's an A. Oops, I didn't weld that good. Let me hit it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's an eight. That's a number eight. It looks pretty good, actually. All right. There's our set of wire digits. They're a little bit crude looking, but uh, they'll do for a uh, test um, mixie tube. All right. Next, we have to weld them onto the frit. That is going to be a trick. All right, here we go. Okay, this is not going to be anywhere near as easy as it might first seem. We've got to... The pins are in a circle, and therefore I'm going to have to arrange this so that I don't run out of pins. Okay, we're going to start at the back and work forward. Okay, so I'm going to put the 10, the 0, on this one here. All right. And then that will fit down over it. All right, we got a 0. little more current. Okay. Here goes again. That put it on there. That put it on there. Now. This is not going to be very easy at all. It looks like stainless does not weld onto the pins very well. All right, I'm going to run the current up a little more. That's a bunch of weld there. Okay. Let's see if it'll hold while we position it. Okay. It's on there. This is not going to be easy. Alright, there's a zero. Alright, next the nine. Let's see. I guess we're going to go this way. Okay, it will be there. I'm going to come down and go
Okay. I've got to go back. Okay, and... Let's see. That's going to be it. Bending the wires to get it to where, when that's sitting in the right place, it'll weld onto that back terminal there. Okay, I'm going to cut a little of that off. Okay, let's see what happens. Maybe I can go in from this side. Yeah, here we go. Didn't stick. Try again. Try hit it again. Okay. Well, it's not shorting, but it's not in position. This is not going to be gravy. <laughs> Holy crap. Look at what that looks like. Oh my gosh, that's a job. Okay, let's try getting the 8 on there. Now the 8... Okay, I've got to get it to this one over here. The 8 will go right here. Alright, I'm just going to take that. Squeeze it. Go. Okay. Okay, now I can see trouble already. Let's see. I, I, I I'm getting too thick. The spacing between them is not going to let us get 10 wires or 10 numbers. You can see that even if all this works, this is not going to be practical. I mean, unless you're just really, really getting off to having fun doing this kind of thing. I mean, this would drive you nuts. What if you're going to make like six digits worth of this? Wow. What it means is it's going to take some kind of a mechanical spacing. Now, I'm just going to zigzag this back and forth. I don't know how many times I can do it. And this is going to be our anode. I don't know anything about Passion's Law or anything else like that, whether this is violating everything. Maybe none of the electrodes will glow. Okay, that's going to be <laughs> our anode. <laughs> if this thing works, it'll be a miracle. Okay, that is our anode, okay? Now, if that doesn't work, we'll hook it up with a virtual anode and be done with it. All right, now i got to straighten all these out before we seal it. Okay, and then the one is right there. That's it. I don't know if that anode is going to work. If it doesn't work, 
we'll hook the tube up with a virtual anode and just hell with the anode. We'll just, just go with it with no anode. Because um, we don't need an anode in the pit Nixie tube. It, it isn't necessary electronically. Okay. Now, there's one thing I don't have in there is the getter. Okay, I'm not going to open the getter up until we're ready. There's one thing we have to do. Epoxy is not going to stick to this shiny glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a diamond tool in the Dremel and I'm going to rough that glass up. Okay, I've got a ball mill in the a diamond ball mill in the in the Dremel, and I'm just taking it and just dragging it on the uh, surface of the glass to roughen it up, give the epoxy something to stick to. If you leave it shiny, it'll break loose from the glass and leave a, a, a microscopic crack for air to get in. Okay, that gives us a rough surface all the way around. Something that, as a benefit of that, it completely cleans it of any finger grease. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I'm going to use this sterile rag here that's been used to wipe up the workbench to clean the inside out um, and get all the grease off of it. I wiped the lathe off with it the other day. But it's still a sterile rag, you understand that. <laughs> okay, that's clean enough. Now we're going to do the same thing on the inside of here. Now I'll take my sterile finger, completely oil-free finger, and I'm going to clean out the inside here. Okay. That's ready to go. Now, when those go together with the epoxy, that should form a perfect seal. Okay, the next thing is to prepare a getter and stick it on up there somewhere, and then we seal it off. All right, for the getters, we're going to mount the getters right over the top of the tube. I don't know how much room I've got there. Okay, I'm going to put them about an eighth of an inch or a little more over the top. And I'm going to mount them to the anode so the getters themselves will act as more anode surface. Our getters are ring getters. These are high capacity ring getters. And I'm just going to weld them onto this wire first. Okay, I'm just going to zorch it right on there. Now this is, you know, not made to be a commercial tube. You couldn't send this in the mail and have it arrive anywhere in one piece. Yeah, break the glass. That'd be great. Okay, that's that's beautiful. That is really good. Okay, now epoxy time. <coughs> We've got about four hours on these getters before they screw up just being exposed to air. Okay, we're using Armstrong A12. We mix two parts of B to one part of A. So I'm going to use my precision screwdriver to measure it. Get me a glob of B. Okay. Okay, and A, we're going to put half of that. The mixture ratio on this is not serious. I, I've mixed it anywhere from 1 to 1 to 3 to 1 and had excellent results with all of it. The main thing is that it needs to be thoroughly mixed. Whatever proportions you're using, you want it to be thoroughly mixed to where there's no uh, unmixed epoxy. Because that unmixed epoxy um, will outgas. Everything that mixes goes into chemical combination and it won't outgas. But if we leave any liquid epoxy there, it's going to be outgassing and potentially could make the tube go bad. Working time on this epoxy is on the order of four hours, so we don't have any trouble at all 
like you do with 5-Minute Epoxy or JB Weld. Now this epoxy is a lot cheaper than that hardware store stuff. You know, even though these cans cost about $70, when you look at how much is in those cans and compare that to those little tubes you get for, for 3 or $4 at the hardware store, it's a lot cheaper. It's about half price. And this is a heck of a lot better epoxy. Well, here goes nothing. I've already checked the tube a second time just to make sure our electrodes aren't touching. Whatever happens after now is too bad. If we get any shorts or anything, well, we'll just have a couple simultaneously lit numbers. This is just an experimental tube. This isn't a real, real Nixie. It's, it's, it's demonstrating that this is a lot more difficult than what it seems. So all you guys out there who want to do this, yeah, you know, look at this and, and keep in mind, you know, you got to you know, overcome these problems. And this, this is not a piece of cake. All right, now I want to get this in there without slopping epoxy all over the getter. Yep. And I'm just going to rotate that. Now, we have to let this sit for four, about four hours. Okay, now I've mounted the tube in the lathe, and what I'm going to do is just let it rotate like that, and that'll keep it centered. We're right on center now, and we got the epoxy on it. We're just going to let that sit for several hours, rotating slowly. And that'll keep it centered while, it, while the epoxy hardens. Now while that's going on, I'm going to fire up the vacuum system and have it all ready to go. Because we want to get these getters fired as quickly as possible so that we don't um, have them go bad on us. Okay, we're trying to vacuum it down. We're having no luck whatsoever. The pump will not come down below about 50 torr. We'll check it with a leak detector. You can see from the glow we got a tremendous leak. The purple glow means we have a leak. And there it is right there. It's on the in the epoxy seal. And you see the sparks jumping right there. I don't know if that shows up on the camera or not. But quite clearly the epoxy did not seal. Okay. Examining it very closely with a magnifying glass, the problem is worse than just around the edge. Looking very carefully, there's a crack in the plane of the pins. The crack goes all the way around the center of the frit. In other words, the frit has been expanded or something to the point where it cracked the glass where the wire leads are, all the way around. So it has a major leak from there. The stresses were just so great that it literally pulled the frit apart. So this has got more problems using the epoxy than what at first appears. So that, that really, uh, <laughs> well, okay, something to just put in the junk box, a neat thing that we made. Well, till next time.